Mark, such a pleasure to speak with you again. And we're talking about Dark Side of the 90s season two. And the first episode here is so interesting. It's all about tabloid television and just the pitfalls that this journalism kind of leads to. And uh, why do you think this is like such a great way to start season two? Because, you know, we saw this parodied in Anchorman 2 a few years back. And it's such an interesting time um, in journalism. It is very skeezy. Yeah, I think tabloid TV kind of ushered in what would eventually become social media. You know, everybody had a voice. And I think for better or for worse, depending on your taste, and I have none, uh, tabloid TV, you know, brought out the worst in human beings. You know, all of a sudden you're getting fighting on TV. You're getting punches. It's, it's, uh, it's bringing out an element that was always on the fringe of society, but now it, it was brought forward. So it was fascinating in that sense. And it really defined the 90s. And it kind of, it started this new gonzo journalism, I guess, kind of started by Hunter Thompson, but now it's on TV. And I think as society and our morals decay, our, 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 our television kind of decays around it. And now it's social media. And now, and now it's come on, now it's come on, you know, it's put on blast now. So, you know, I think it's great that everybody has a voice. That's the good news. That's also the bad news. I think tabloid TV really brought that to the forefront. Um, so it's really an interesting dive into that whole world and just how, how much tabloid TV really affected the 90s and, and, and the programs we see today. You know, I mean, I think the decade, the 90s in general had such a profound effect on uh, how we uh, carry ourselves today because it was the last decade where we all had a communal sharing of TV, of music, of, uh, of, of, of so many different things. We're now, it's all, we're all splintered off and depending what your, your likes are on social media. So. It's kind of hard for me to articulate and really hit that button bullseye bullet point of why tabloid TV meant so much. But I think the reason why I can't really describe it is why it's so like omnipotent around all of us in the 90s. Yeah, it's such a relevant thing. And then the episode also goes into like the coverage of the OJ case. And it feels like it's all happening again. You know, the Johnny Depp trial, it's just moved on instead of TV, it's on social media but it's so relevant. It's, it's shocking how, just watching this stuff um, in retrospect and you realize like these issues have morphed, but they haven't disappeared at all. No, that's a really good point. I, I think that I, I touched on that a little bit that things that would never have made the evening news. I mean, I remember, I'm, I'm old enough to remember, that's why I'm hosting the darn thing. <laughs> but you know, I remember watching the Knicks basketball game and then Al Michaels broke into the OJ chase, I, I, oh, the OJ chase. And I'm like, is this, national news you know and then i'm like well of course it is in today's in the way society is shifting and like you just touched on very uh intuitively we're seeing it today nothing nothing is uh off limits in terms of, of, of like uh, of tv and, and the reality i think the more reality the more tabloidy the more we sink our teeth into it whether it's the you know whether it's in in, in, in literature whether it's on social media and, you know, is that the best for us? I don't know. I, I don't know. I just can't imagine Walter Cronkite back in the day narrating the OJ chase. You know, I just can't it. You know, there's driving, you know, and that's the way it was. You know, it's just so, I, I don't want to say like things got worse in the 90s in terms of like a societal ethic and that's getting too deep. But I think what the dark side of the 90s, it's called the dark side of the 90s for a reason, is what it does, it touches on a lot of cornerstones and a lot of foundations that we see how news is delivered today. And a lot of it is very divisive. divisive. You know, rarely is there a really just objective news source anymore. And if you would have told that, that us in the 90s, we would have said, you're insane. You know what I mean? You're the, these are just fringe, you know, networks that are trying to apply to a certain, you know, demographic or a certain, you know, a specialty political group. But today, it's either what team are you on, our team or theirs. And I don't think we could have ever predicted that in the 90s, you know? A tabloid yeah. TV had to do with ushering that in. Yeah, it's wild. And uh, the, the second episode in this season's great as well, covering the Cops TV show. It, it was something that like I didn't really ever notice because I grew up watching Cops. And it's like, wow, this is kind of like dystopian that we would just watch this on TV. And it was so accepted and celebrated at the time. So how interesting is it just looking back with hindsight on these you know, cornerstones of the 90s where like you didn't really think too much about like that was up with it. And then you're like, oh, this is kind of very weird though. <laughs> we weren't really talking about this. 
Yeah, it is incredible. And it's weird how there's kind of a connect the dots thing happening with tabloid TV, with cops in particular, that that show, because it had political slants that I didn't really know until I narrated the episode. I'm like, wow. Yeah, I guess it was kind of pro cop the show. And then, you know, and getting to know the deep dark down recesses and how the show was made. Cause you know, dark side of the nineties, they do the deep dives. That's why the show is so compelling. And I gotta be honest, I'm not the biggest wrestling fan in the world. I watch every episode because of the way these shows are made. And I know I've got a sideline seat and a vested interest in because I'm hosting it and narrating it, but I love these shows. They're, they're incredibly well done. So they do the, they do the deep dives on something like cops. So let, let's do like a little, let's go a little retrospective of cops. Imagine walking in in 1989, early nineties, into a network and going, I got this show. We're gonna follow a bunch of cops around and see what happens. I mean, they, I mean, they got laughed out of, out of every network. They got laughed out and thank God Fox, the network Fox that we did a episode on the first season. I mean, all these things are connecting and I'm and now that I'm talking to you Tyler, I'm kind of, I'm having an epiphany like, wow, <laughs> the nineties is really smart, way smarter than I am. So all these things are kind of connecting and, and, and showing you the fabric of the nineties of kind of why we are here today. And I think it's important to do these deep dives. Now, cops followed a bunch of cops around and I was fascinated the first episode because I mean, and I love the real world the same way. I just loved reality TV. It had me right away. And, and you know, they did, a, you know, it was a very graphic look at policing and how it's done. Um, but then, you know, it got into the, um, the Rodney King vibe, you know, and that had worldwide, you know, it was like a, powder keg that blew up around the world and how policing was done. So you had to kind of look back at cops and it was untouchable for a while going into the aughts in 2010. So it's really interesting. This little show cops, you know, that Fox network took a chance on because they needed some programming became such a pivotal milestone in terms of programming that had political, socio, and even economic ramifications that we're still feeling today. I don't know if we're any better off today than we were in uh, 1989 when this thing first debuted. So it's really interesting that cops was kind of synonymous with how policing was done. And then you see the pendulum swinging back today and how policing is being done. So I, I don't think they knew what they were making. And I think that's what's interesting about the 90s. We didn't know what we were doing. We thought the, we thought the uh, decade was going to end with Y2K. We get into that too, you know? So we were just going, whatever, let's just throw a bunch of shit against the wall. And Sugar Ray was one of those things they threw against the wall. And thank God we stuck. I wouldn't be talking to you, Tyler. And by the way, bro, I apologize. I go on a million tangents because I'm passionate about the dark side of the 90s. There's so much deep dive, so much great stuff in there. And a lot of it connects. And the more I talk about it, the more cathartic it is for me. So I think I owe you some money, Tyler, for talking to me today. It's awesome. I love I love your tangents. And one of the episodes I'm really excited about is the UFC in the 90s, because it really was the Wild West back then. You know, narrating that episode, what really stood out about that time period? It's so far removed from what the sport is now. I think, well, looking back in retrospect, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? At the time, the brutality of it all, I thought we were all going to get arrested for watching the UFC back in the day. It felt like it felt like a fighting smut film. You know, guys were poking guys' eyes out. People were getting punched in the nuts repeatedly. You know, they, they, would, they would pair up guys like an 800-pound sumo wrestler with a 145-pound Brazilian jiu-jitsu, you know, artist, which back then none of us knew what jiu-jitsu was. No one knew what he was. No one knew what an arm bar was. So to see the rise of this sort of like, you know, voyeuristic, uh, you know, dark world viewing, it felt like guys that went in the back of a barn at a bar back in the 70s and 10s. Texas and just, you know, it's gotten these street fights to become a billion dollar industry, what it is today, that is surpassing boxing at the gate. Nobody, nobody would have thought that back in the day. You know, you had guys like Tank Abbott back in the day in the early 90s. This guy would come out of a bar with a beer belly out to like, you know, out, out to like Texas, holding beers on his beer belly, literally hung over from the night before he would fight, you know. Tank Abbott today would never exist because MMA fighters are the most, you know, well-skilled athlete, uh, athletes in the world. So I think it becoming this sort of shoestring, where are we going to host this thing next in Alabama? No one would sanction it. Nobody. I mean, you're too young to remember, Tyler, but I remember watching all those fights. I watched the first one until like 200, and then I kind of gave up when I, you know, there was, there was ones on every weekend, but I watched the big ones still. And to, for have to become this thing that like, it's, you know, if you look at the ESPN, uh, you know, uh, website, it's a, it's an option you can pick NBA, NHL, MMA, UFC, you know, it's like, it's so 
hardcore that it became this gigantic billion trillion dollar industry around the world and it seems to be only getting bigger they have these humble beginnings and you know it almost died many times dana saved it with the uh reality show that happened in 2000s that's a little later but it just became this gigantic it's fun to watch a sport grow from the ground floor. I think that's what I can say most about it. And of course, there's all the human stories with so many wonderful athletes that, you know, came in, you know, that, that just triumphed over uh, gigantic obstacles. But of course, it has the ups and downs. It was a dark business. Let's not lie. They cleaned it up a lot, but it was dark when it started. And that really, really is revealed in uh, the UFC episode. And there's two parts of the, there's two, there was so much UFC going on. We'd have two episodes, just two parts to it. Awesome. I'm looking forward to that. You know, there's a reason why John McCain was calling it human cockfighting and why it had the fight to survive there. And um, for my last oh, question here. I'm sorry. Real quickly, just to go back on that. Also, UFC back in the day, they had, it was a tournament. It was a round robin tournament. So you had to fight multiple times that night to win so you had guys walking out there with their eyeball falling out missing a finger like with a bullet hole in their side and they would go out and fight so it was brutal it was human cockfighting like john mccain say i said and the only way they could become the gigantic sport is today by cleaning up and they did and it's it's just it's incredible compelling sport i've always been a big fan of the office and you appear on like the penultimate episode how did that cameo come about? That always seemed like the most random thing. Yeah, you know, when you, and on, on paper, it seems like a random thing. But when you think, hey, we need kind of a douchey host to host this fake <laughs> acapella singing competition. I think I'm on a short list there, Tyler, to, to be a candidate for that. You know? And I still have the frosted tips and highlights. But I got to tell you, I watched the first Office in the UK, and I loved it. And I said, good luck, Office. Uh, America, good luck with this. Steve Corral, you got a chance, but there's no way you're going to match the genius of that UK version. And not only did it match it, it became one of the best TV shows in the history of television. So I can be so bold. I love it. I got a call from them, just from an agent. I didn't have any connection to the show. I kind of said, I was probably on a short list, ironically. And uh, I got to be on, like we said, with the Pendulum episodes, uh, whatever you said, I said it wrong. Um, and Ed Helms, I remember. Everybody was cool, but Ed Helms was such a gentleman. He was everything you hoped he would be on that show. And it was such an honor uh, to kind of button up that series. Never mind the season. Uh, and it was a lot of fun to do. And I got to work with Aaron Rodgers, which was great. So that, that's something that's great. And, you know, every now and then I check for 25 cents. That reminds me I was on that episode of The Office. You know, when you were saying, <laughs> you were saying like everybody was cool, but Ed Helms, I was like, oh, man, is he going to bury Ed Helms? But you were like, no, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> like they're all great but ed helms you're like wait dude are we are we fake best friends right now am i gonna call you away from this I mean, he's such a wonderful human being and he was helping me look good like he didn't have to stay there and do my he, he was off camera and he stood there to do his lines with me and that's a real sign of class in the acting world you know i've done just enough to know that uh and it just i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't sing his praises higher what a wonderful human being Mark, such a pleasure speaking with you this season. You know, the two episodes I've seen were great, and I'm sure the rest will be as well. I appreciate that, Tyler. Enjoy every episode and everybody watching and uh, listening to this thing. If you like the first one, if you love the dark side, you will not be disappointed. And thank you all for checking it out.